So today we talked about a familiar passage of scripture, this woman who was in a peculiar place, but had the sense to run to the prophet to get insight, information, and instruction. When you get those three things from God, it will never leave you in the same place or condition as you were before. Now, when he gives you insight, information, and instruction, are you willing to obey it, even if it sounds crazy? Once again, in this series, we show you a woman who already had what she needed in order to do what she needed to do. She just needed to be willing to use what she had. And in true God fashion, he did exceedingly, abundantly, above all she could ask or think. The question is, what's in your house? What's in your hand? What's in your possession? What are you carrying? What are you holding? What are you handling that God wants to increase and multiply if you're willing to release it and let it go? He's going to give you a revelation of your resources and you will live off the rest. Let's go. So today we're going to talk about you got you got this and uh, we're going to have a familiar passage of scripture. Uh, one of my favorite stories of so much insight and revelation uh, in the book of Kings. But the, the title is you got this and you have more than oil. You have more than oil. It's the woman that had the oil in her house, although she thought that the oil wasn't enough. But she had, not only did she have oil, she had more than oil. Um, I've been saying it all month, and I will continue to reiterate the fact that you have everything you need to create everything you need. And I want you to put your faith on that to really realize that everything you need, you have already have. You just need to have the recognition of what it is that you possess. And so all month we've been showing you each person in every situation how God gave them a challenge to accomplish something. But in that challenge, he also revealed to them that they already had what they needed to do what he was asking them to do. Moses had a staff. Peter, he already had a net in his hand. The king last week had an arrow and a bow and just needed to have a revelation of, his, of their resources and to know what God had given them. I promise you that what you need in your present situation, what you need right now to do what God is calling you to do is literally close by. You just need God to reveal to you what it is that he wants you to do with what you have. And if I was you this midway during the year, I would put a demand on the wisdom of God, on the knowledge and the understanding of God to reveal to me what it is that you have put in my hand. Abraham, when he went up to obey an instruction, God told him, listen, I want you to follow this instruction to the T, and when you get up there, I got a surprise for you. How many of you know that God had a ram in the bush? And you can't be stuck on, I get so much revelation from that because it's a, it's a prime example of how you cannot be stuck on just what God said. You have to be listening to what God is saying because sometimes God does not reveal reveal everything that he's thinking at the same time. It doesn't mean that he changed his mind. He just knew you couldn't handle all that at once. So sometimes he tries to see if you can move in faith to obey a God instruction. And then while you're in the middle of the structure, he say, hold your hand. I got something in the bush. You ought to thank God for showing up with something in the bush when you didn't. <laughs> I'm not just stuck on what he said. I want to know, God, what are you saying? right now. So today we look at this woman who had a perceived major problem. She had a perceived major problem and I say it was perceived because what she was lacking was perspective. What she was lacking was perspective. This weight of this problem in 2 Kings the 4th chapter, first verse, the wife of the man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead. 
dead. And you know that he was a man of God. He revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as slaves. So she comes to the prophet with this perceived problem. She's under duress. She's under stress. And she's in debt. How many of you know God doesn't want you in debt? Huh? I need somebody that's ready to break the back of debt in your life to put a praise on that right there. Anytime anytime, anytime, anytime you have a financial crisis. It is shown in scripture that God is concerned whenever we have a financial crisis. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 7 says that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. But God does not want anyone to be a slave to anything. And I just believe that anytime you owe somebody some money then they try to control your life until you pay them back. But God says that I'm about to give you a strategy for your success. Help me pre preach up in here. God's about to give you a strategy for your success and he's going to give you deliverance from your debt. I need you to touch somebody on your left and your right and say you debt free in Jesus name. Come on. Tell them we got a cash anointing in this church. Come on. There is no debt. We break the back of debt over our life and God's going to give us a strategy strategy because he does not want us to live under stress and live under debt. Uh, he wants us to be free to obey a divine instruction. And when your money act funny, you start acting funny. Help me, Lord. He don't want you to act funny up in here. And so she says, she says, she says, this man is coming to take my sons as slaves uh, and she's under all type of pressure. And she thinks that she has, uh, she thinks that all she has is the problem. But God says, I'm about to reveal to you uh, that you have more than you think you have. She's under pressure. Anybody ever been under pressure today? She can feel the pressure that is the responsibility of now having to be the primary breadwinner. She's under loss. She's grieving her husband. She's lost her husband. And now they are threatening to lose or take her sons. She's under debt. She's in grief. She she has a financial need. She's under stress. She has fear looming over her life. She got anger issues. She's got disappointment issues. She's got pride that she's dealing with because she don't know how to navigate this situation. Have you ever found yourself under pressure? Have you ever found yourself dealing with loss, dealing with grief? Can't give up, can't go and throw in the towel. Dealing with debt, dealing with a financial need, uh, dealing with stress, uh, dealing with fear, dealing with anger, disappointment, pride, all these things uh, all over your life and happening, filling your life up everywhere you turn uh, and yet you know somewhere in the middle of this, uh, God is in the midst of it. God's going to give me a revelation of how to deal with all this stuff. Uh, this is not the pressure that God wants you to live under. He wants you to know uh, that if you have this kind a problem uh, that you can go to the hills from which cometh your help because uh, all your help is coming to God. Uh, I need somebody that has ever been under any of this and God helps you get out from up under it uh, to let your neighbor know that it's a praise in the middle of your problem. I need somebody to know that sitting under the sound of my voice or watching in the room right now uh, that God is able to deliver you. He's a deliverer. Come on, clap your hands, 730. Declare he's a deliverer. I feel his anointing. He's about to break it off of somebody. Somebody came here carrying this. But how many of you know that if you cast your cares on the Lord, he will care for you. This will not get the best of you. This will not get the rest of you. He's about to give you a revelation on how to deal with your stuff. She thinks that she's under this pressure, but she has sense enough to know who to run to. Who shall I run to? My God. She has the strength enough to not try to take this on herself. She has the she has the understanding to know that God is a prayer away, a call away and all I need to do is call on God and this will not be my story. I need somebody to prophesy to the screen and declare this is not how it's going in. Come on 730 you already know this Bible 
Bible story, you know that she coming up out of this. The enemy might not know it, but you know that God's about to be a deliverer. And if he did it for her, ah. So she comes with all of this stuff and carrying all of this stuff and she comes to the man of God and when she comes to him with all of this, she's ready to dump it on him. She's ready to give it to him. In the story, the prophet represents the God factor and she's ready to give it to him. This was a man of God. You know him. I want to release all this stuff because energy, spirits transfer. Spirits transfer. And you have to know that even when somebody is carrying this, uh, help them carry it to God, not to you. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. <laughs> uh -uh, you ain't about to, I was having a good day and you ain't about to disrupt my day with all this mess. I'll intercede for you and with you, but I'm going to tell you to take it to God because I ain't none of I ain't none of God. I ain't none of God. And people are quick to try to exchange and dump they stuff on you. And you have to be careful not to let somebody dump they stuff on you. Because if both of us in the same situation, neither one of us are any good. I'm going to get up from under it and I'm going to show you how to get up from up under it. I'm going to keep my praise so I can let what's on me get on you before what's on you get on She ran to the man of God. She said, help me, help me, man of God. Uh, she cried out to Elisha. She said, help me, help me. I'm under all of this pressure. And Elisha, he's with, with the wisdom, says, how can I help you? I don't want to be insensitive, but how can I help you? How can I help you? I want to help you help you. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I'm not about to help you and then you don't help yourself. But I will help you to help you. Because if I help you help you, then you'll be helped for the rest of your life. If I let you depend on me, then you'll never know how to help yourself. She went, she went to the prophet, she went to the prophet, she went to the prophet ready to release what she had on him, thinking he's possibly going to get me up out of this. Maybe he's going to write me a check. Maybe he's going to pay my bills. Maybe he's going to pay my rent. Maybe he's going to give me what he's been carrying to deliver me from this situation. And you have to be careful when you run to people or people run to you with their problems and try to get you to give them something out of your hand. Huh? The wisdom is not to get something out of someone's hand who is a deliverer. The wisdom is to get something out of their head who's a deliverer. I don't just want to know what's in your hand. I want to know what's in your head so I can know how you got what's in your hand. Y'all didn't hear what I said over there. I, I, I want to know, I want to know how you got to the place that you're in. I don't just want your stuff. I want your God. I don't just want I, didn't, I don't just want you to be a deliverer for me. I want you to show me how to be a deliverer so if I ever get stuck again, not only can I deliver myself, but I can help somebody else be delivered. I need somebody that learned some lessons over your life that said, I'm so glad I learned what I learned and I know what I know. I learned what I learned. I don't just want to know what's in their head. I want to know what's in their, I don't want to just know what's in their hand. I want to know what's in their head. I want to know what's in your head. I want to know what's in your head because when you go to God, what God gives you when he's really going to deliver you is he gives you insight, information, and instruction. Look around you and tell them insight, information, and instruction. Come on, prophesy to tell some Somebody, God's about to give you insight, information, and instruction. I need you to type it on the screen and declare insight. I release it in the atmosphere. Information and instruction. He's going to give us insight, information, and instruction. And teach us how to do with something with what he gave us. You see, if you get the proverb says that if you give a man a fish, you feel 
feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. I don't just want handouts. I want to know how you got what you got. I don't want to be just every time depend. Some people love to give you stuff because that keeps you dependent on them. And some people say, I'm not giving you nothing. You might be mad at me for a season, but you're going to thank God for me later because I taught you something that you didn't know if I just kept being your deliverer. Help me, Lord. Don't let people guilt you into always handing things out to them uh, because that does not always help them. Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And so this woman comes uh, to the man of God and he's like, I'm about to show you how can I help you? How can I help you? I'm going to teach you how to use what you have. I'm going to teach you how to use and leverage what you have. And so then he sends her back to the house to use what she has. She comes running to him thinking that he's going to deliver her and then he says, this is how I'm going to help you. I'm going to send you back to the house to realize that you left what you needed. You left in the house what you already had. You trying to get delivered and you forgot that your deliverance is in your house. I feel a praise right there. Somebody ought to declare deliverance is in my house. You ought to speak it over your family, over your bloodline. God has got deliverance up in my house. There is deliverance in my house. He points her back. He points her back. He points her back to the house that she left. She comes out of the house looking for the man of God to deliver. He points her back and says, go back to the house because I'm going to show you what you already have. He asked her a provocative question. He asked her a question to make her think. Insight, information, and, uh, uh, and, impart, and, and instruction. He says to her, tell me what do you have in your house what do you have in your house surely God has not allowed this situation he didn't cause it but he has not allowed this situation and left you with nothing what do you have in your house remember whenever God asks you a question it's not because he doesn't know the answer it's because he wants to know if you know the answer huh? <laughs> whenever God asks you a question he's trying to see how you're going to answer what do you have in your house your servant she says has nothing at nothing there at all she said your servant has nothing there at all she said then she remembered she said except a small jar of olive oil I have nothing in my house except for this little situation this small jar of olive oil I got a big need I'm under a lot of pressure and I got a lot of stress and a lot of problems and the only thing my husband he didn't leave me with no policy he didn't leave me with no life insurance he left me with some bills and some oil uh, y'all hear what I'm saying and, and, and nothing but a small jar of olive oil Elisha said go around go insight information and it's he said, go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Go ask your neighbors for empty jars. Do not ask for a few. Pay attention. Then when you get the jars, go inside your house. Shut the door behind you and your sons and pour what you have into what you got. Pour oil into all the jars. Listen to the prophet and as each one of them are filled my God help me slow down put one aside and keep going now wait a minute it just takes faith even to obey that instruction because how in the world I told you I got one jar and you told me to get many pots that means that if I just pour what I have into one jar the pot gonna already be bigger than the jar but how many of you know that when God gives you an instruction it will always require faith and God 
God's trying to see if I give you instructions that require faith, can you follow out in faith so you can see that I'm about to blow your mind. Uh, I need you to tell somebody around you, I got a feeling uh, that God's about to do something supernatural in your situation. Come on, prophesy to him. Uh, tell him God's about to take your situation and flip it. He's about to do something supernatural. He's about to blow your mind. Uh, I don't want you to look at what you have. I want you to listen to what God said because what God said is greater than what what God said is greater than what you see what God said is greater than what you see and if you learn to obey what you hear faith come by hearing hearing by the word of God you hear what God said and you start moving on it God starts putting his super on your natural and he gets ready to expand and to grow I need somebody to know that when you pour oil in a pan it starts to expand there's an expansion that's about to happen over what's in your hand There's expansion that's about to take place on what's in your hand. And when I see your preparation, I see your expectation. I'm going to say it again. When I see your preparation, I see your expectation. When I see what you're getting ready for, your posture, your attitude, the way you show up, the way you dress, the way you step into a moment. When I see your preparation, I, I see your expectation. I know that you're after something more than where you are because you don't look like you belong where you are. You start dressing for, you start acting like, you start carrying yourself like you're going somewhere. You start looking like you're more than where you are because you know that it's just a matter of time that something is about to break out in your life. And so and so and so and so he says he says to go get the jars because if I see you get jars then I know that you believe in that something is about to happen if I see you exercise your faith I know that you are in preparation and in anticipation for something because you are preparing for something more when I see your preparation I see your expectation and so he starts to challenge her to go get something around you because I know that you said all you have was a little oil and you discount it and discredit the power of what that can do but you have more than you think you have never underestimate the power of community help me Lord never underestimate your, your neighbors and your people and your friend circles how many thank God for good friends not, not because I need to hold, let me hold something no, if you can't hold nothing but help me pray, if you can just share something with me, if you can just give me a word of encouragement, sometimes that ends up being something that carries you to the next season. Do not underestimate your community, your neighbors. He says he activates her power of community. He said, go get your oil, then go to your neighbors and start to borrow your jars because God's about to increase your network. And when he expands your network, he's going to expand your net worth. I'm going to go ahead and say it like I feel it. It's who you know and who you're around that is your greatest resource of your relationships. Don't underestimate relationship equity in the kingdom of God. Don't underestimate the right connections and the right people. Some people can get you further with favor than you can with some finances because favor is better than money. favor is better than money and so he says just go to your neighbors and start getting some resources because your network and your network is going to increase go to your community they got jars they might can't give you oil but they can give you a jars a place to put it you got help in your house don't talk to your sons close the door and when you get back with it oh close the doors and lock them in and start convincing them that we're going to work what God gave us I declare that there is help in your house I declare that your family is going to be your greatest resource not your greatest uh, letdown I declare that the people in your house is about to help you I declare that you will start to gather your relationships and God's going to help you do more and go further faster with the people that's in your house 
<laughs> you got limited you got limited resources or so you think because you only have a, a little oil and I told you to go and activate your neighbors go and activate your jars go and activate your sons and take that back with your oil you got this but you have to be willing to do something with what you have you got this but you have to be willing to obey a crazy instruction you got this but you have to go gather the other missing pieces if you're going to multiply what it is that's in your hand you got this Moses but if you run to the Red Sea don't look back look at what's in your hand and stretch it forth because I'll make a way out of no way you got this Peter I know you've been washing your nets but if you let it down one more time you're about to get your biggest catch you got this King but I want you to shoot the arrow out the window and strike it on the ground and give it everything you got you got this but you can't just look at what you're holding you got to do something with what you have tell somebody around you tell them you got it you got it you got it you got it come on tell them you got it 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 but when God tells you to do something with what you have do not reason with your natural mind because this instruction is spiritual and the instruction being spiritual will require faith it will require you to step out your comfort zone it will require you to use your, your relationship with God it will require you to believe for more than what you have and what you see it will not be a natural instruction it will be natural things in a spiritual way and you have to learn how to hear God in the spirit so that you can move to manifest what it is he's having you to do what happens with what you have and what you have and what you use is what you do with what he tells you what will happen next is based on what you do with what he tells you what happens next is based on what you do with what he tells you this woman of God said hey I don't have nothing to lose I may as well give it everything I got if all I have if I hold on to what I have then all it will be is what it already is but if I take it and treat it like a seed then I can multiply it into something else in the kingdom of God God never gives you the fullness of a harvest first he gives you the raw materials that contain the harvest to see if you know how to plant the seed and turn it into more than what it is God said I want to test your faith to see if you can take what you have and turn it into something else this woman of God said listen she left the prophet she shut the door behind her and her sons she brought the they brought the jars to him she they said he said she said go get the jars they start bringing jars to him and while they was bringing jars she start pouring she start pouring she shut the door don't miss the fact that sometimes while you're working you got to keep the door closed because everybody don't need to know what you working on now you you can't tell everybody because if you tell some people they'll talk you out girl what you over there doing oh I'm over here just obeying God I'm pouring jars I'm pouring oil in the jar girl you must be crazy click up talk to you later because uh, right now I, I can't afford to let anything or anybody get in the way of my God instruction uh, and if you wasn't where I was to hear what I heard him say then I can't afford for you to talk me out of what I know he said Tell your neighbor, say, shut the door, shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. Shh, you're too loud. Shh, don't tell everybody. They gonna see, don't worry about it. If they keep watching, they gonna see. Don't, you don't, don't announce that you coming. Just let them know that it's something that's about to break out my house. And you gonna see the manifestation in just a little while. I'm in here in private obeying God. And the Bible says that what you do in private or in secret, God will reward you publicly. You too busy trying to get people to, to people to reward you publicly uh, instead of giving God a private praise. Uh, your private season is about to give you a public victory. Can I get somebody to release your praise uh, if you've been obeying God in a private season? I've been a I'm in a private. <laughs> Don't underestimate your private seasons. 
Don't underestimate your private seasons because it's when you close the door what you do in private that God sees your private behavior and he rewards you publicly. And when people see your public promotion, they say, well, how you get there? We ain't seen you in a while. That's because I was drinking my water and minding my business. Help me, Lord. I was minding my business. I was not trying to post. I was not trying to promote myself. I was just obeying God. And I had nights where it seemed crazy. And I had days where it didn't make sense. But God just kept on filling up my jars. Because the more I obeyed him, the more overflow, overflow, overflow. Because somebody declare overflow, overflow. Somebody speak overflow, overflow. <laughs> Look at the scripture, verse 6, and I'm done with you, 730, when all the jars were full. You don't know when to shout. When all the jars were full. What? When all the jars was full. What? You mean he turned my not enough into more than enough? When all the jars were full, look at the reply. They replied, the son said, there are no more jars left. And then the oil stopped flowing. You mean she started out with not enough. She ended up with more than enough. Not only did she have enough to fill the jars, but she had overflow. I need you to prophesy to somebody and tell them overflow. I declare overflow. I speak overflow. I decree overflow somebody somebody put it in the atmosphere overflow 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 she started out thinking that she was gonna run out she started out thinking that she was gonna run out and she ended up having more than she had when she started. <laughs> because the truth is you will run out of jars before you run out of oil. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Anytime you obey a God instruction, you will run out of what he told you to put it in before you run out of what he told you to have. That's why he keeps on opening the windows of heaven, pouring out a blessing you don't have. That's why your money's still stretching to the end of the month. That's why you got more bills than you got money, but you got more money than you got bills. I need you to put it in your row and declare God's about to give you overflow. I need you to type it in the chat and declare God's about to give you overflow. If you believe it, release your praise in the atmosphere. Yes, I got time. Come on, I got my reasons for doing this. Clap your hands and bless him for overflow. He's about to show you how to do more with less. He's about to show you how to do more with less. He's about to make it stretch. Where the mamas at that feed the whole neighborhood with pork and beans and hot dogs? Y'all ain't playing with me up in here. Where the, where the people that say, I don't know how it's going to stretch, but God knows how to stretch you. I still, I still, I still, I still don't know. I still don't know how my mama fed me and all my family and all my friends with the little that she had. But the more that we gave, the more we received because God will never let you run out if you decide to be a giver. When all the jars were full, she said to her sons, bring me another one. They said, we don't have any more jars. We borrowed all the ones we could, and we have literally capped out all of our jars. And then she said, the, then the oil stopped flowing, and she told, she told the man of God, this is the part that people miss. This is the part that people miss. People get in spiritual environments and get spiritual instructions, and then go and try to accomplish in the flesh what was assigned in the spirit. 
In other words, they come to God when they have a need. God give them an instruction, blesses them, and then they forget to come back to where. Oh, you was faithful when you were single. Now you got a boo. You can't remember God no more. Anything that takes you away from God was not God. I got to mind my business. This is the most powerful part of this scripture because Pastor Reed, without this little part, she has a room full of jars with a room full of oil and oil left over. But she's still in debt. She still is under stress. She got all the existing situations, but without this one little part, <laughs> She, she obeyed the instruction, but she didn't finish the instruction. And so people love to come to God when they looking for the answer. But you got to learn how to come back to God after he give you the answer and the answer work. Because technically what he told her to do worked, but it didn't, it didn't manifest yet. So she said, she came back to the man of God. She like, I did what you told me to do. Now I have all these jars. I still got oil left. I didn't even believe that was gonna happen, but it did. She said, now what do you want me to do next? Prophesy to your neighbor, tell them God's about to tell you what to do with it next. Come on, tell them, I how did they act? How did they act? Come on, tell them God's about to tell you what to do with it next. Don't just praise God for your last move. Praise God for your next move. Because remember, I don't want to just know what God said. I want to know what God is saying. This is where he gives her the strategy. This is where he gives her the, the cheat code, the missing piece. He said, uh, he said, uh, he said, woman of God, go sell. <laughs> I got a church over here. Go sell the oil. You in a drought. People don't have oil. You the only one that have oil. And I just multiplied your oil. They need oil. You need money. Supply and demand just made you go up. You thought you didn't have nothing, but you had what everybody else didn't have. Hop out your praise partner and say, I don't have what you have, but I got what you need. I can't be in competition with you. I'm not trying to be you. You, you, I'm me. You got what you got. I got what I got. But oh, if I put what I have with what you have, we about to make something happen. I need you to get a praise partner on your road and declare I got what you need. I gotta, I gotta go. Go. Sell the oil. Pay your debts. You and your sons will live. On what's left. Woo, I can run up out of here. I told you God's going to give you a strategy for your success and deliver you from debt. Go sell your oil. Pay everybody. I need you to declare everybody getting paid. Everybody. I ain't owing nobody nothing. I owe no man Go sell the oil, get your website, get your LLC, get your C Corp, get registered, fill out your paperwork, open for business, go take what you thought wasn't enough, sell what it turned into, pay everybody you owe, and then you and your sons will live. Get your praise partner, tell them you and your house gonna live. Come on, tell them your house will live on what's left. Can you go up in a praise with them? Tell them we about to live on what's left.
Yeah, my son. Do y'all believe this Bible? We about to live on what's left. That woman, that woman went from not having enough to having more than enough and living on what's left. Pastor Hannah prophesied to you in 2020, what you do in these 10 years is going to set you up how long? But a rent, tell your neighbor, we about to live on what's left. We, come on, my retirement accounts just got full. My investments just came up. My money just increased. My saving just went up. I got a bigger percentage rate. I had to move some money around. I put some money in the bricks. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. My name just came up. And if he don't do none of that, he gonna let me live on what's left. It's gonna last. It's gonna last. Come on, we gotta go. Say, go, you and your son's gonna live on what's left. What does she do? Strategy, ask your neighbors. Don't be too prideful. Leverage your relationships. You hear me? Hear me. Don't be prideful. Leverage your relationships. Ask your neighbors, but don't ask them for the stuff. Ask them for, for, for the thing you need to make the stuff you have work better. <laughs> Huh? Partner with your sons, with your family. Get your relationships in tight. Build partnerships. Pour your oil. Just give it everything you got. Don't have a scarcity mentality. Don't have a poverty mentality. When you run into poverty mentality, rebuke it. You came for poverty, it's gonna come up. Oh, you're gonna scared to run out. The devil is a lie. We don't run out no more. We don't run out. Tell, look at somebody and say, we can't run out. We can't run out. We can't run out. Well, I got to hold on to it. No, I got to, I got to multiply it. Long as I hold on to it, all it'll be is what it is. I got to get rid of think. I got to get rid of stinking thinking. That's not kingdom thinking. That's fear. And then take care of your business. Handle your business. Pay your debts. Open that mail. Don't be afraid of it. It ain't going nowhere because you didn't open it. You threw it in a drawer, think it's gonna disappear. No, it's still there. If you don't have the finances for it, have faith for it. Do something crazy like open the bill up and start talking to it. I declare you paid. I declare you. God's about to give me favor. When I call, they go erase the debt. Or better yet, they can't find the dead either way. Come on, tell somebody, all 2024, we taking care of all the business. Come on, 2024, we taking care of all the business. Somebody declare I'm out of debt. And all my needs are met. Now put a praise on it if you believe it. Come on, let's stand. We got to go. Can you obey a crazy instruction? Like take a little oil and pour it into a lot of pots. Maybe God gave you an idea, a business idea. Maybe he just gave you a strategy. Maybe he just told you how to, how to budget. Seek the Lord. He's going to give you a strategy for success and wisdom how to pay your debts. And live all the rest. Off the rest. Huh? Uh, one of the, one of the uh, in the last, what, two weeks, one of my streams, one of my streams wasn't streaming. 
I ain't talking about no Netflix neither. I'm talking about one of my streams wasn't streaming, it was clogged up. For some reason it wasn't flowing and I was trying to figure out where the flow was coming, why the flow wasn't coming. So I prayed, I was like, God, you gotta give me insight, like help me to know what I don't know. Help me to see what I don't see. So I sat still to listen. And the Lord brought to my attention to pay attention. Tell somebody, pay attention. I learned, I learned this from Pastor Hannah. He say, my Holy Ghost started kicking. <laughs> he said, I woke up in the middle of the night and my Holy Ghost started kicking, saying, uh-uh. <laughs> Anytime he do that, I start paying attention because something's being revealed in the spirit realm. So I start paying attention I'm not, without getting into all my business and taking too long in the testimony. As I start paying attention, I leaned into something and I start to look through some records. I usually, I usually reconcile this particular record in a quarterly situation. But God said, pay attention in this on a monthly situation. I pull my records, I start looking through, and as I start looking through, I notice that I have been overcharged. $5,000 overcharged. And that thing was supposed to fall off, and it didn't fall off because it was just a hold, and they never let it go. I said, look at here, I done found $5,000. I picked up the phone, I called, I said, excuse me, uh, y'all owe me $5,000. No, sir, Mr. Glenn, we already paid that, blah, blah, blah. I said, you ain't paid nothing. You can go check your records, because I got receipts. <laughs> they said, we're going to have to call you back tomorrow. I said, go on, call. I ain't worried about it, because God showed me this. I know this money coming back to me. They called me the next day. They said, Mr. Glenn, you were absolutely right. We're so sorry. We owe you $5,000 and it's coming through right now. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. $5,000 showed up back on my record. I told my wife, I said, the Lord just gave us $5,000 back. Then I paid attention. Tell somebody, pay attention. I had put another deposit down on something that they told me they reversed and they didn't reverse it. I went back and I looked and they owed me $500. I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm just missing money around here. I rebuke that spirit in the name. Come out, you, you spirit. I called them. They said, Mr. Glenn, you right, $500. I found another $1,000. You hear what I'm saying? In one week where I was asking God to give me some more money because a stream had dried up, he didn't open the stream to give me more money. He showed me where I had money that was missing. <laughs> Tell your praise brother and say, either way, by the time the week was over, we had increase. declare that somebody got some unclaimed money you better go you better go put your name in and see if see if comment owe you a hundred dollars extra that you paid over your light bill I, I could keep going but I could keep going I could I could keep going but the point is that I was looking for God to give me some money. And what God, the way God gave me some money was he revealed some money that I already had that was missing. You can't think. It, he didn't give me nothing that was outside my house. He gave me, he revealed something that was already in my house to say what you looking for, you already got. It's already in your possession. It's in relationship. It's in favor. It's in a miscount. It's in somebody going to pay you back that you thought they wasn't going to pay you back. Somebody going to walk up. Somebody that you let the money go because you said it never was going to come. They're going to walk up and say, you know what? I just came up and I'm about to release your money. How many of you know that God can do it? He can give you money. When you ask God for insight and information, listen to the instruction and do what he tells you to do, even if it don't make sense. He will reveal to you 
what you already have. Lift your hands all over the room. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for insight, spiritual intel, supernatural insight, instruction, and information. Thank you that you're telling us what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and how to get it done. Thank you that you're breathing on our idea. You're breathing on a strategy. You're opening up scholarships. You're releasing resources. You're making money manifest. You're, you're giving us things that we thought we lost. You're showing us how to do with what we have. And God, at the end of the day, it's not about finances. It's about faith. It's about faith, God. It's about having faith in you to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. And God, as our, our antennas are up and our ears are open, this season, reveal a revelation of our resources. And we give you a, a praise and a glory for it is so in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. <laughs> now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think according to the power that's working in us you already got the power working in you God's going to do exceedingly and abundantly what you can ask or think. You received the word today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, can you just release a worship for a moment? Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, in the atmosphere, put a worship out there. I must say, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you did it for the woman, you can do it for us. We will not worry, doubt, or fear. We trust you. Somebody under the sound of my voice this morning, you came to church this morning, God's been pricking it at your heart, reminding you to get back to his house, get back plugged in to the kingdom of God. He let that pressure happen around you, not to destroy you, but to draw you to him. Scripture says, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come, ye that are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Somebody under the sound of my voice, one of three calls, need to come this morning to give your life to Jesus. It's the best decision you could ever make. It's the best decision you can ever make. Not for stuff and not for things. Come on. Come on, my sister. Not for stuff and not for things, but because he wants your life. Rededicate your life to Jesus. Also, you might want to join New Life. How many of you know this is a good church to be a part of? It's a great church. We point you to God around here. We give you the Bible and point you to God. If you hear one, you know, these one of these three calls are your calls and you want to join these ladies that are here on the altar, come join us on the altar wherever you are. This is your Sunday. What's up, man? This is your Sunday. This is your Sunday. If you're here, come on. If somebody else is here, he's going to make sense out of the nonsense. He's going to give you a strategy. Don't just serve God for what's in his hand. Serve him for who he is. If you're here, I want to give you an opportunity to join them. You can come wherever you are. Come on. Come on. Somebody else is coming. I can always tell because new life start praising God and celebrating. Come on here for overflowing 730. My man. Come on, anybody else want to come? Come on, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate. I want to join new life. Even if you're watching online, no distance in the spirit. You can come. Even if you're in the balcony, we'll wait for you just a moment. Come on, wherever you are, whoever you are, come. Come wherever you are. Come, this is your Sunday. And I don't want you to miss this opportunity. Hallelujah. Is that all right? All right, let's pray this prayer. Y'all pray this prayer on the screen with me. We're going to pray this prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's the faith in the God of the prayer that saves you. We got intercessors coming to stand with you, to stand behind them. They're just going to stand with you. Let's pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, 
forgive me of my sins. I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this belief and confession, I am saved. Come on, if you know it to be true, clap your hands and bless him. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman down the middle, he's going to walk you to the back room just to get your information so we can keep up with you and pray for your new life. Going to give God praise for your life and celebrate. He's able. Yeah. He's going to fulfill every promise. Somebody declare, don't give up on God. That's what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Say, say. Do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. You got this. Be encouraged today. Listen, it's tithe and offering time. Y'all ready to sow into the kingdom of God? What is tithe and offering? It's when you take a portion of what God gave you and you dedicate to give it back to his house, to his work, to continue to advance his kingdom. And the seed that you sow in the kingdom of God never leaves your life. Tithe is 10% that we give to God of our resources. And then we give an offering over and above our tithe. Overflow. Overflow offering. We ask that you sow an offering one of four seeds. One of four seeds that you can sow over and above your tithe. First of all, where are all the tithers at? I'm a tither. I'm a tither. I'm a tither, I'm a tither, I'm a tither. God, I thank you for all the tithers. I thank you that we give it to you off the top. Your promise declares that we shall not and will not run out. Over and above your tithe, you can give an offering, $24, $48, $76, dollars and $96, 24, 48, 72, $96. One of the four seeds over and above your tithe. That's my offering. That's my offering that I give to God. My overflow seed. Hallelujah. When you're ready with your seed, if you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. They'll serve you. When you're ready with your seed, you can just stand up all over the room and wave it, wave it high. It's your oil. <laughs> it's your oil. This is the last time you're going to see it this amount. The next time it comes back to you, God says it's coming back to you exceedingly, abundantly, above all more exceedingly abundantly uh, good measure press down shaking together running over i mean so many promises about the way that you give to god something he give it back to you more than the way you gave it so many promises we wave our offering to the lord and we give it to him father we give it we give you our offering we give you our heart as well we give you our faith we give you our obedience if you're watching online no distance in the spirit so where you grow it's coming back to you come on when we sow we say what we say I'm a tithe and a giver I am I have I'm living <laughs> I'm living in Ephesians 3 20 
for the for the rest of my life.